Alrighty, everybody, everybody listening to um, the video series. I just hope that everybody's doing well. I'm um, just praying that <clears throat> if you're not keeping up 100% with the Bi uh, Bible reading plan, um, that's totally okay because I've been slacking too, but that doesn't go to say that, um, man, just been desiring more and more intimacy with the Lord and just being able to set at his feet because our God is so, so, so good. So just praying that over everybody that's listening. Um, and just in general, yeah, praying that everybody's doing well this summer, um, away from the community, super tough, all the loving faces, all the loving people, I miss them big time. Um, but we're here right now, super blessed uh, to be able to, um, yeah, just be a vessel and just praying that the Holy Spirit can um, just use me as that vessel and just uh, as we're delving into God's word here. So uh, I've had the privilege to just uh, delve into uh, 2 Thessalonians um, these past couple of days. Um, yeah, I, uh, I'm going to be straight up. I, uh, kind of forgot that I <laughs> was, um, um, picked as to do this one. So quick text to Travis and quick text to Kaylee to make sure, um, that I'm with the due date, um, and we're just doing the right thing. So, um, definitely leaning on the Holy Spirit to lead me, uh, through this. Um, I'm not going to give a whole Bible project or a full summary or just bore you guys with that. Um. But I just want to um, talk about what the, the Lord has laid on my heart, uh, reading through Second uh, Thessalonians, being um, a pretty uh, just a small, a small letter from Paul um, to the church of Thessalonica. Um, yeah, um, also super grateful for that because, whoo, um, with it being last minute, I would have had to fly through this, but um, just been able to kind of marinate with um, the word uh, through work today and the day before. So. Yeah, let's just get right into it with it being a letter from Paul to the church of Thessalonica um, and the people of Thessalonica just being absolutely freaked out um, um, of hearing the word and just uh, kind of misunderstanding and kind of bringing it upon themselves to try to understand when the second coming of Christ is going to be. Um, oh, yeah, that would freak me out too, not having any clarity um, or anything um, more with that and just I'm um, saying, oh, Jesus is going to be coming soon and soon. And, you know, when you hear that, um, it's also could be a, a, a dark day for some people not uh, proclaiming with their mouth that Jesus is Lord um, and believing in their hearts that God has resurrected him from the dead. That can be a dark and uh, very dreadful day. Um, yeah, standing up to the righteous and just God and judge. Um, so that can be a very scary day. And so now they're they're freaking out, running about and whew, like Spider-Man. Like Spider Man, we got uh, we got Paul swinging in and just clearing things up for us, just clearing things up for us. Calm amidst the storm is Paul writing this letter. Um, is really what <laughs> I've, I'm taking from it um, that he's he's talking about these things. Um, but he just first begins with like an encouragement, an encouragement at the beginning of Thanksgiving and prayer is what my uh, Bible says. Um, so yeah, he's reminding us of G who Jesus is, which it just clears. It just allows us to start on a blank slate. Um, so yeah, um, I wrote down verse eight of chapter two. Um, yeah, and then the lawless one, the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will overthrow with the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Um, just that alone um, can just wipe out any. Um, doubts any any fear uh, knowing that we have a lord a lord and savior that when he comes he is going to destroy the lawless one just like just like that just like a s slice of the sword um when he, we see here the overthrow with the breath the breath of his mouth just one single breath wow yeah just how how fleeting a breath can be we don't even think about breathing a lot of times but it's just like another day it's another day for jesus and Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Um, yeah. Um, another big thing that just stood out to me was that this 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 passage is just about a, 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 just a major encouragement, a major encouragement to the people of Thessalonica. Um, verse 5 of chapter 1 is where I'm going to first go to. This is the beginning of the uh, letter. Um, Paul writes, all this is evidence that God's judgment is right. He's a righteous. He's a righteous God, righteous judge. And as a result, you will be counted worthy, worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. 
Um, I just have I have uh, it highlighted twice, it underlined several times, and just circled worthy. Um, and as a result, you'll be counted worthy. Um, just right here, right now. Um, to know that we are worthy in God's eyes. That um, it's not by the world's standards, because the world's standards are just going to be throwing us under. They're going to... Um, they're going to be quick to judge. They're going to be, um, yeah, we, we don't stand up to world standards. And here, the people of Thessalonica have been suffering um, through persecutions and several, and not several, but many, many trials. Um, yeah, just reading that too, just, it, it, it throws everything, everything under the bus. And just like, oh man, I've been suffering with, you know, uh, I don't, the, my stomach ache or this and that. But man, these people are suffering for the word of God. And God is saying that this suffering is worthy. It's worthy of his kingdom. And that's so comforting. It's so comforting to hear. Uh, I also got verse 13 of chapter 2. I want to I wanna go to. Um, but we ought always to thank God for you, brothers and sisters, loved by the Lord. Because God chose you as first fruits. First, first fruits to be saved through the sanctifying work of the Spirit and through belief in the truth. There's so much to unpack there. <laughs> Reading it time and time again. Just getting smacked by the Spirit right now. Holy. But again, another word that stands out to me is first fruits, and that God chose us as first fruits. Um, I know that Paul is specifically writing to the people of Thessalonica, but we know that with the death of Jesus and the resurrection of Jesus, he has called us as worthy and he has chosen us as first fruits. And that is just so filling. It is so filling to, to know. And it's, it's through the belief in, in, in the truth. And God is the truth. The word of God is the truth. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. Going into verse 16, kind of skipping through some verses there of chapter 2. Um, oh, yeah, verse 16, chapter 2, sorry. Um, May our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope. Encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word. So it's not just like a good pick-me-up, um, just for a couple minutes pick-me-up kind of thing, uh, um, a motivation. It is an eternal encouragement, an eternal encouragement and hope. Something we can't even fathom, eternity. And he's telling us that oh, our eternal encouragement is found through the Father, is found through God. Thank you, Lord. Mm. But yeah, no, no, I also just want to say this. This is heavy on my heart. Um, going, reading through this, um, it's not just butterflies and flowers, uh, just quick motivation that Paul is trying to get here, get, get about. Um, he covers the full wrath, the full wrath and the glory of God. So going just at the, the forefront of this, of this um, letter, going to uh, verse 6 of chapter 1. Um, God is just. He will pay back trouble to those who trouble you and give relief to you who are troubled and to us as well. This will happen when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in blazing fire, blazing fire with his powerful angels. angels. So when the Lord arrives on earth, I, it, obviously I'm going to picture something glorious, but also there's that side of just pure wrath. He's going to be a pure wrath that's going to just be a blazing fire that's going to absolutely devour everything that's not of him. He despises everything that's not of him. Um, and we just, yeah, that's, it, it, it can be uh, uh, quite concerning. But when reading that, it, it, it should be comfort. It should be comfort. That should be comfortable reading this as Christians, um, knowing that he loves us so much that he's going to burn up everything within us that's not of him. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. Um, yeah, and I just want to go back to verse 8 of uh, chapter 2, um, just with ease taking down the lawless, the lawless one. That, that, if that doesn't tell you of his glory and of his strength and of his might, then I don't know what will. <laughs> That's just incredible. And then also, the nations, proclaiming to the nations. The nations need to know. The nations need to know this. So proclaiming this can look, in a, look a whole lot different uh, for each person in each situation. But I think there needs to be a lot of importance uh, stressed on this uh, verse of verse 15 of chapter 3. Yet do not regard them as an enemy, but warn them as you would a fellow believer. When we're going about proclaiming the truth of God's wrath and that 
without proclaiming that Jesus is Lord and believing in our hearts that God has resurrected him from the dead, we are, are fully going to be met by God's wrath and he's not going to know who we are. Even though we stand before the throne of God, if we don't do these things and repent of our sins, then we're going to have to face the full wrath of God. And that can be a scary thing. But again, going back to that, the, 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 the fire, the fire, the blazing fire when Jesus arrives, it, it, it should be a comfort. It should be a comfort. And the most loving thing we can do with that piece of information is proclaim it. Obviously, with the spirit of discernment in certain different situations and uh, with different people, um, the most loving thing we can do is tell them that exactly that and tell them that hell is is waiting for them if we do not proclaim these things with gentleness and with love we got to proclaim these things um yeah because this joy uh this goodness and this comfort is only found within the lord and knowing the lord mm. yes well guys <laughs> i uh i hope that wasn't too all over the place but um yeah, I'm just praying that you guys can all just delve into this too and just absolutely take away whatever the heck the, the, the Lord is just laying on your hearts with this because there's a whole lot more to this than what the heck I just covered. Um, yeah, so just praying that you guys can just delve in and that the Lord can, the Lord's hand, the Lord's hand can just be upon you, upon you guys. Um, yes, Lord, we thank you, God. We thank you for this time. Uh, we thank you for this community. Um, and we just pray that you can keep being a lamp unto our feet and that we just keep delving into your word, God. We thank you, Lord. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Love you. We'll see you.